Here we've got a Cyrus S7 integrated amplifier today and the problem is that one of the outputs is dead uh, one of the channels and so the amplifier is powered up at the moment and you can see on the DMM that uh, we've got one of the supplies on the output and normally that would suggest that one of these uh, one of the output transistors or both of them or some of this circuitry has gone wrong um, and that usually is associated with one of these fuses blown but both fuses are fine in this case so that tells me that the output transistors are okay so there's something else funny going on and the other thing we can do is we've got our uh, uh, little power supply checker strip here so we can check all the, these power supplies and these are fine also so where is the problem this time? Uh, and what you find with this type of amplifier is that uh, as well as the main supplies they generate a, a filtered version of the supply for some of the lower current portions uh, these lower power transistors here so what you find is there's a generally an RC circuit uh, uh, on the negative rail generally sometimes on both rails but generally on the negative rail and so we can look for that uh, and I can readily see it here um, this is the main supply here coming into the power transistors and then we've got this resistor here which is a 10 ohm resistor and a capacitor and uh, my expectation is if I measure that resistor it's going to be uh, open so let's first of all We'll take a look at the voltage uh, on one side, so we're getting 47 volts there, that's fine. And really I'd expect the same voltage to be on the other side. And it's not, I'm getting 3.3 .3 volts, so that tells me that resistor's gone wrong. And if I compare with the other channel, um, there's my 47 volts on one side. And because I'm not drawing much current, expect the same on the other side. And there we are, 47 volts. So this side's good. That's clearly wrong. Uh, now if I power this down, and we go and simply look at the resistance, then I measure the good one. And we're about, it should be 10 ohms-ish. There we go, 10 ohms, quite good. And we look at this one. And it's reading 11 meg, so that's essentially open circuit. Uh, now it's not the case that that could be the only, that's maybe the only problem, we'll replace that resistor and see, there could could be something else that's caused that to go wrong. Uh, but we'll go ahead and replace that and uh, see what we find. Here we are then, we've replaced this resistor, here's the dead one here. Um, so DMM's connected to that channel output, Let's power the thing up and see what happens. Uh, so we get a little kick as we turn it on as you expect and then it settles down to about 23 millivolts. So that tells me that's everything's good to go there. Um, so what we'll do now is we'll go and um, because this is some years old now there's going to be some capacitors there that are past their best um, there's some classic ones that generally need replaced so we're going to go and give it a general service we'll uh, change some of these capacitors, we'll set the bias and then we'll do some testing on it, we'll make sure it's uh, playing ok and sounding ok um, another comment on the Cyrus 7 <clears throat> generally the like say the Cyrus 6 or the Cyrus 8 if you're using the PSXR then it automatically switches between uh, the internal supply and the PSXR. With the Cyrus 7 that's not the case. The, the, uh, you have to actually open it up and change uh, some of these connections over. It's, it's really very simple though. Um, what you've got here is this red and yellow wires and you've got the grey and the blue and you basically swap these pairs over. Uh, the, and the instructions are on the board there, um, uh, so it's as simple as that. Um, but once you once you convert to PSXR, you you can no longer use this amplifier without PSXR. 
So that's the sort of inconvenience and the difference between the 7 and the uh, some of the other models. But easy enough to do. Anyway, right, so we'll go ahead and we'll uh, do the sort of general service stuff and then uh, have a listen to this amplifier. So I commented that generally we see RC filtering uh, only in the negative rail of the lower power stages of power amplifiers. And so I just I've got a, a segment of schematic here just to describe that in a little more detail. Now this is not a Cyrus schematic in any way, this is just a general schematic for a power amplifier. And we've got our input stage and then the uh, voltage amplifier stage and then we go on to the output stage which is not it's not on the screen here. But we see that on the negative rail we've got a 68 ohm resistor and then a 1000 micro capacitor. So th this say, RC filter gives us rejection from any supply ripple that's coming in here. And it means that the negative rail of our input pair is nice and clean. Uh, as well as the negative rail of the voltage amplifier stage. Now, on the positive side, on the positive rail, our input pair is driven from, generally anyway, it's driven from a current source. And the higher output impedance of that current source gives us rejection. You know, that's, that's uh, having uh, some effect on the supply, uh, any supply ripple there. And the other aspect here is that the base of this current source, the base of this transistor has got some filtering um, just via this uh, resistor uh, capacitor combination here. And these are quite high values. So this is these are not in the supply rail, but they're actually given a filtering element onto the base of that current source transistor. So that takes care of any ripple on the positive rail. And that's really the reason why you generally don't see an RC filter on the positive rail. Some amplifiers do, it just depends on the architecture that they use. Um, but that's the theory. And in our case, this resistor has just simply gone open circuit. And the reasons why, we don't know. I, I think that the resistors Cyrus use for uh, these uh, um, applications, it's a fusible res resistor and I've sometimes seen these go just, just because of age. Um, so that's been our problem, we've replaced this resistor and uh, we're back up and running again. So here we've uh, put the amplifier back together, we've uh, done, the, done the repair, we've done the service and set the bias and everything's good to go now. So what I'm going to do is just, uh, I'm going to connect one channel of uh, a, the output to a loudspeaker one at a time so that we can see that uh, both sides are working quite happily. So let me just uh, first of all connect this side, turn up the volume. So that shows us both both channels are working fine and we'll just go and have a listen now. <laughs> 